Well, last week, well, really the last two weeks, we looked at who we really were. We asked ourselves some diff difficult questions, and last week I asked you to look closely at what your strengths and weaknesses were. For me, that involved coming to grips with those weaknesses and hopefully uh, beginning a process uh, to improve them, right? Well, now that we've started the process of identifying what part of the body, as Paul mentioned, or team, uh, or puzzle, as I mentioned, that we are, we can start to talk about how we experience authentic Christian community, because that's where we're eventually trying to get to in this chapter that we've been working through these last several weeks this summer. So today we make our way to uh, Romans 12, verses 9 through 13. Let's pray together. Lord God, open our hearts and minds to this, your word, that we might hear the message you have for us this day, that we might continue to grow as individuals and as a community of faith as we strive to be your people in this place and to serve you with love. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Romans 12, 9 through 13. So, as I said, this morning and also next week, we are going to look at how to experience authentic Christian community. And to do that, we'll look at these verses 9 through 13 of our chapter here in Romans. And I promise there's only one more section after this, so if you're tired of, of, of me in Romans 12, you get a break, because I won't be here Labor Day, and we will be done with Romans 12 by then. So I promise the end is near if you're done. But if you're enjoying this and digging in, then... Uh, I invite you to stick with me today. Why is Christian community important? It's to give us a Christ-centered place to belong and impact the world for the Lord. And the reality is that most of us probably never find um, this in our place, uh, this or our place in life, okay? A.W. Tozer writes, most of us go through life praying little, planning a little, jockeying for position, hoping but never quite certain of anything, and always secretly afraid that we will miss the way. This is not what God wants for us, friends. God wants us to give uh, Him our best and for us to be a part of an effective community of faith, continuing the work of Jesus. Christian community, now listen to this one. Christian community starts not with strategy, not with doctrine, but about how we should treat one another. And that's the general uh, principle of these few verses of, of, of this chapter today. Look at Jesus at the end of his life as an example. On the night Jesus knew he was going to die, after washing his disciples' feet, after sharing uh, time with them, he gave them a new command. And this is from John uh, 13. Uh, 34 and 35. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this all men will know you are my disciples if you love one another. So we're going to spend, as I said, two weeks on authentic community. And this first week is about this very first step. Treating one another as Jesus did everyone he encountered, especially his disciples, with love. Now you may have caught a glimpse of this when I talked to the kids because this is not always easy, is it? It's easy to love carrots, I guess, from their perspective. It's easy to love uh, doing the things that we enjoy, building Legos or camping or whatever it might be. It's easy to love the ones that love us back, but it is not always easy to love others. And authentic community is very difficult to find and even more difficult to maintain because we mostly love ourselves. 
I thought I was so close uh, when he said uh, that we should love our neighbor. And I thought he was going to say, as ourself. But he said, our neighbor named Helen, or whatever he said, right? So close. But authentic community is hard to find and even harder to maintain because we love ourselves. Certainly we love ourselves, we love our families, even myself. I'm guilty of naming off Joshua and Jordan and Julia and Dale and Ellen and Aaron and Brian as my list of people that I love rather than uh, the guy I bought gas for yesterday uh, on the highway. I didn't mention him. We love ourselves, we love our families, we love our stuff above others. And Paul wants us to be sure that love is at the center and that we are different. Immediately after challenging each of us to know our roles, as we heard last week, he moves to our treatment of others, right? So we're to know what part of the body we are, we're to identify our skills, our gifts, our weaknesses, to work on those weaknesses, and then we're to move directly toward loving others. Hopefully using those skills and using... Uh, what God has blessed us with. He starts with sincere love. He starts with relationships that have zeal for serving the Lord. Now, I got a few of those kids worked up just a few minutes ago, but could you imagine if Tuesday at 7.30, instead of, it's time to welcome the presbytery, we were excited, and we were welcoming, and people really thought like we wanted them to be here, and it wasn't just a pain that we were obligated to do because we're one of the biggest churches in the Presbytery. Wouldn't that look so different? So maybe by this point you're wondering, what is authentic community? And I want to share with you what Ingram means by this. You know, we've been working through uh, True Spirituality, which is Chip Ingram's book on Romans chapter 12, and... I want to share with you what he means by this. And I think once you hear what he means, you'll be excited and you may even want to be a part of a, an authentic community. Now, listen up. Ingram writes, authentic community is powerful. Authentic community is something we all long for. Authentic community goes way beyond simply being on a team or being part of a club. Now, Remember, we talked about at Montreat, I was uh, there, and, and Kelly and the kids and all were there, and we had this uh, uh, fiery, young Baptist preacher who was our preacher every night, and he always said, here it is, look at me, look at me, pay attention, get your phone out and write this down, this is that moment. Going back to the quote, ready? Authentic community occurs when the real you shows up and meets real needs for the right reason in the right way. Well, there's a lot of real in there, two reals and two rights, uh, and they seem to make all the difference. In fact, I'm going to read this again. In fact, better yet, let's put that quote up on the screen. Ingram goes on to clarify this further. He says, it is when the love of Christ is shared in exchange with vulnerability sacrifice and devotion it's a place where you can just be who you are and be loved in spite of your struggles hang-ups and idiosyncrasies now I don't know about you but that sounds like a pretty great place to me a place where the real me can serve the real needs of others in the right way for the right reasons I think in our finest moments JPC can be that place but here's a little truth bomb for you. I also know that in our least Christ-like moments, we look nothing like that wonderful, authentic community. And I would say that in any church in America, I'm not just attacking us as a community of faith. Please understand that. Now let's go back to what I said just a few moments ago. Authentic community can be hard to find. This is because we aren't really willing to make any real change. Sure, we go to a small group or a Bible study. Uh, we take our kids to youth group. Uh, maybe you're excited and your kids are going to go to the baseball game Wednesday. Uh, we might come to Presbytery on Tuesday. We're in church almost every week, but we don't want to go all in. We just want to think that being there entitles us to whatever life we want the rest of the time. We don't really love or live as if we love and live for each other. 
This is because we aren't willing to let the real us be seen. Maybe we're afraid. Maybe we've been hurt in the past. But remember, the first step to authentic community is, in the quote that we put up just a second ago, is letting the real you show up. It's vulnerability. And I think if there's a singular disease that ruins authentic community, it's that of hypocrisy. When our relationships are characterized by posturing, seeking to impress, acting as though we have it all together. What's that, what's that song we sing downstairs? Line number one, you're supposed to have it all together. Is that how the lyric goes? Right. We, you know, I, I remember 20 years ago, um, when Aaron and I were first married, we lived that line. Our house was in Washington, Pennsylvania, and our church was in Hickory, Pennsylvania. And we had this neighborhood on the hill, and we drove down to the bottom of the hill and turned left on, is it, was it Highway 18? Sure, it can be Highway 18 today. <laughs> someone, someone in this room will get out an atlas and say, actually, Pastor Jay, it's Highway 9 that connects Hickory to Washington, Pennsylvania. But anyway, turn left on Highway 18, and 8.6 miles later, there was our church sitting on the hilltop. It was, a, it was this beacon. You could see it for miles. And I can't tell you how many times we drove down that hill, turned left, and yelled at each other for 8.6 miles at like 7.45 in the morning. I don't even know how you're a pastor. Well, I don't even know why I'm married to you. And, you know, on and I mean, I'm talking yelled at each other. Uh, you know, maybe our power got turned off because Aaron forgot to pay a bill. Maybe we were dying in a, <laughs> dying in a pool of dying in a pool of sweat because I insisted we could survive the summer without air conditioning, you know, or some other ridiculous thing that we chose to fight about. And we did it for 8.6 miles, approximately 12 minutes, and we turned in the parking lot and we did this. <laughs> uh, I did, you didn't. <laughs> she was fine with being authentic. Uh, and then we got back in the car, and guess what? After church, we were so filled with the Holy Spirit that we were given this new zeal for getting right back into it again. That is not what this is about. When our relationships are characterized by posturing, seeking to impress, acting as if we have it all together, or downright untruthfulness, we eliminate the possibility of authentic community. And we can never be loved unless people know the real me. Not the version I present to gain people's approval. And this is true for each of us. We're afraid because it's risky. The possibility of rejection is so real. Ingram says this about this, uh, this area. It's risking rejection by being honest and authentic in relationships that allows me to experience genuine acceptance when the people in the group embrace and care for me despite my frailties, my struggles, and my emotional baggage. I promise you, there are people, there are people in this room, there may be people in your small group or people in your Bible study that will accept the real you this day. And this is a two-way street. It starts with us being vulnerable and ends with loving acceptance made possible by the Spirit of God. And that's when we see Christ in each other, both in our strengths and in our good moments and in our weaknesses and our bad moments. Could, I'm sorry, I'm, not, I'm just so not used to people being over here. I feel like I'm ignoring you all. It's, I'm, I'm glad that you're all here today. Could you imagine if God didn't each day extend His grace to us grace upon grace in Jesus Christ? Could you imagine if we as individuals or a church got what we deserve from God? Because I certainly cannot. In response to God's grace, let's strive to be real and authentic, but accountable to each other. Now, hold on. I'm, I'm, I'm done. But this is not a license to be brutally honest or an ogre because that's the real you, okay? You can't go, be gruff and rough. I can't go out to the car and ride to lunch yelling at my family because that's how I feel and I, I'm embracing the real me. You're being called to be the real you in Christ, okay? A model of Christ, who God is calling you to be, taking those strengths, 
taking those gifts that you've identified and saying, this is who God has made me and this is who God wants me to be and I'm willing to share that with others. Next week, we'll look at the difficulties of being real and staying real. We'll also discover what could keep us from experiencing authentic community. For now, focus on sharing the real you. Focus on welcoming the realness of others. And finally, pray and ask God to bring authentic community to this place every day, not just in our best moments. Will you pray with me? Lord God, we thank you for the chance to be your people in this place. Help us to be your authentic community. Help us to desire to serve you. Help us to love and accept everyone and to meet them where they are. And help us be willing to share our difficulties and problems with you so that we might know one another, strengthen one another, love and support one another in your name. It is in the name of Jesus we pray.